One of the questions I always get is, what is someone who teaches supply chain management doing publishing in the Journal of Economic Etymology? Well, my undergraduate degree is in entomology. I also was a mushroom grower for more than 35 years. And as a grower, there was a multitude of things that I would see. And I was sure that I had the answer, but you never really know. There's a lot of other things that are involved that maybe you're not able to see. So now that I'm uh, at, at Lehigh University, I take uh, advantage of that, uh, that I can actually do some research and find out some of the things that I thought that I knew, uh, are they really true? So I approached some colleagues of mine. I approached uh, Maria Mazin at Penn State and Galena Noggin from uh, Cornell University. And I said, let's take a look at some of these problems uh, that I've noticed as a grower. Mushrooms are grown in uh, climate controlled houses. And you can see here uh, that they're grown in beds and all the mushrooms are grown directly in the beds and they harvest them uh, from those beds. So when you get green mold, and that was the biggest concern I had, I noticed that we were getting green mold and it was a, a brand new disease that started in 1994 is when we started to see it in the United States. They had seen it in Europe prior to that and uh, it showed up in the United States in, in 94. And this is a very devastating disease because instead of getting mushrooms, you would get big patches of this mold that would just take over and, and there would be no mushrooms there. And it could be so bad, you could have 100% loss. So it was a devastating disease. It was something that uh, we worked through as, uh, as growers the best that we could. And we were also trying to figure out well, just where did this thing come from? How is it spread? Why is it growing? Why did it appear? So one of the early researchers uh, working on this was uh, Dan Royce from Penn State. And uh, we actually published a paper in a journal called uh, Plant Science. So one of the things that, uh, that Dan thought was that green mold might be spread through air currents. So that's how uh, many spores are carried uh, uh, from, from the mushroom that we grow uh, is also an airborne spore. Uh, so why not in, in, uh, with, with the green mold? So this graphic here kind of shows the layout of the beds. And you can see there's, there's different patterns that are shown in that. So there's lighter squares, there's darker squares. And what that represents is the amount of green mold. So if it gets darker, there's more green mold. If it's lighter, there's less green mold. Now, if it was spread by the air, you'd expect it to be pretty evenly spread throughout all of the beds. But you can see it, it, it's not. There's a lot more on the top. There's a lot more in the ends. There's a lot more on the sides. And this actually kind of gives a pattern that kind of indicates that something could be carrying it in. And what the thing that I thought was, was the flies. So the flies tend to uh, come in from the outskirts of the growing room, right? So they're coming in from the ceiling, from the front, from the back, from the sides. And you can see that that tends to be where there's more. The other thing is you can see that they, they tend to be close to each other and they seem to go linear down the beds. And we hypothesized that that was from mechanical vectoring. So that could be equipment moving down the beds. That could be uh, people moving things down the beds. You can see, for example, here where the workers are filling the room. So uh, the photograph on the left, the workers in one square and in the one on the right, he's, he's moved on to the next square. The worker, the equipment could be carrying the spores and, and spreading it. And that's what we saw, thought we saw uh, in that graphic that we showed there. Uh, that there was a relationship as you move down the beds. I also said that it seemed like the flies were involved also. So this shows a mushroom fly and there's the green mold, our arch enemy. And you can see how there's really no mushrooms wherever the green mold is, right? There's a couple up in the corner, but it outcompetes the mushrooms and, and you can have a hundred percent loss. It can be absolutely devastating. Now, Maria and some of her work that she had done earlier she showed, and you can see that in these electron micrographs that she did, you actually have got green mold spores, and you see this as T. aggressivum, uh, that's for trichoderma aggressivum, that's the scientific name of, uh, the, of the green mold. So they obviously have the spores on them as they move around and, and lay their eggs, why couldn't they be spreading the spores also? But it gets even worse. It turns out that the 
uh, that there's mites. There's a pyomotid mite. Now, this picture is not of a pyomotid mite. This is a two-spotted spider mite. But it's the same thing with, with most mites that are a, a problem in agriculture, that they can carry spores also. They can spread disease. So it's bad enough that the flies carry the spores, that the mites carry the spores, but the flies carry the mites that carry the spores. And we think it's a very effective way for spreading uh, the green mold disease. So one of the things that we should see is there should be some sort of correlation, some kind of relationship between the, uh, the number of flies that you have and the number of green mold foci that you have. Uh, this is some old data that I did. This was not included in the study. This was something that I did as a grower, right? So as a practitioner, I wanted to know, are the flies part of the problem? Now, the flies are problems in and of themselves. We were always trying to control the flies. But we have something called an economic injury level. So there's a certain amount of damage that comes from the flies. But if they're also vectoring a disease, there's a whole nother level of damage that can come from that. And that's an important thing to know. So I did a univariate analysis that you see here. And, 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 and just as a uh, a bit of precaution. Any researcher worth the salt will not do a univariate analysis. This was done as a grower, as a practitioner. We needed to have answers very quickly. Um, and if we didn't need perfect information. We just needed to know what to do. So I found that there was absolutely a relationship between uh, the number of flies we had and the amount of green mold we have. And you can see it's a strong relationship by the uh, R squared that you see there in the data below, and also by the very small uh, p value, right? 7.8 times 10 to the negative 6. So I feel very comfortable that there's a relationship between the two. Uh, but once I came to the university, uh, it said, but, you know, we, we need to look at this more closely to see if this is actually true, because there's lots of things that we would think we knew as growers that if we looked at it more closely, uh, it turns out we were mistaken. But when we looked at the data, uh, doing multivariate analysis, we actually found there definitely uh, was a relationship between the flies uh, uh, and the amount of green mold that we have. And actually, there's a fly monitor that we use to uh, count the number of flies in the room that we find that for every 20 flies that we find on the monitor, it increased the number of uh, green mold foci, the spots that we saw on the beds uh, by one. And you can have hundreds and thousands of flies uh, that you can trap in these monitors. So you can imagine very quickly you could be overwhelmed not only by flies, but be by the amount of green mold uh, that you saw there. Some of the interesting findings that came out of this, uh, other than the fact that the flies were in fact uh, implicated as, uh, as vectors, was that the remoteness of the farm was important. And this was something that I would thought about for years and we tried to work into our design whenever we build farms, we wanted to try to break that life cycle, not only of the green mold, but also of the flies. And a good way to do that is to separate the growing rooms or separate the uh, individual farms. So a lot of farmers who are in congested areas will say, oh, they're, they're not my flies, they're my neighbor's flies. Well, they're your flies now uh, because they're on your farm. So by designing the location of your farm that you, you break up the life cycle. So the, the flies need to go from the old rooms to the new rooms to continue their life cycle. And that's also uh, the case for the green mold. And by having uh, a, a great separation, and we find about, about five miles or more, uh, it prevented them from getting to the other farms and it broke that life cycle. And we saw not only a reduction in uh, the number of flies that we saw, but we also saw a 70% decrease in the amount of uh, foci, the, the, the spots that were appearing uh, on the beds. Not surprisingly, we also find that in rooms that uh, the mushrooms were grown organically, we saw a 25% increase in the amount of green mold uh, that was in those farms. So one of the things that you can look at is, well, we weren't doing anything different mechanically we were filling the rooms the same way. Uh, we were using the same type of sanitation. There's no difference between that and conventional. Uh, and there are no pesticides for green mold. So regardless of whether it was an organically grown room or a conventionally grown room, 
the sanitation was the same. There were no pe uh, pesticides in terms of uh, fungicides. But what was different was you can't use the insecticides against the flies uh, in, the, um, in the organic rooms like you can in the conventional rooms. So we feel very comfortable that it was the increased number of flies in the organic rooms uh, that was causing the increase in the uh, amount of uh, green mold foci that we were seeing in these organic rooms. So there are some very, very interesting findings that we had. A lot of them validated things that growers felt they knew anyway, uh, but it's important to have that uh, validation, just like a mathematical proof. Uh, you think that something is what it is, but you have the, the, the proof behind it, and then you know you're not wasting your resources, uh, that you're focusing in the right direction. Now we're continuing this research on the green mold because as, as we shown in the earlier study that was in uh, plant science and also this one that was in the Journal of Economic uh, Entomology, uh, the mechanical vectoring by humans and equipment uh, is very important also. Uh, so now we're looking at what are the particulars of that mechanical vectoring and uh, how can we improve them to reduce uh, the amount of green mold. So we're very excited to move forward with that.